Hey, everybody. This is the show where we are incredibly inspired by the love and change that local nonprofits bring to their communities. And we believe that speakers and nonprofit professionals deserve the chance to share their stories, collaborate, and network with their communities and sector. So without further ado, you're listening to Nonprofit Connect, a podcast by Rogue Creatives hosted by me, Matt Barnes. Let's go. Hello, and welcome to Nonprofit Connect with Matt Barnes. Welcome. I'm Matt, and... And I'm Tiffany Pope, the one and only. The one and only is correct. Anyway, (laughs) welcome to the podcast. For those of you joining us, maybe for the first time. Yeah. New year, new podcast. I don't know. New year, new me, resolution goals. Come on, let's go. Oh, my gosh. You got to bring the energy. (laughs) Come on, new year, new us, positive vibes. I'm I don't here know for when it. this is getting used. Anyway, yeah, <laughs> we're saying all this and then they'll end up putting this episode out in April yeah, or something, but no big, no big deal. Whatever. <laughs> this podcast is, we are just passionate about nonprofits and we yeah. want to help them connect and learn from each other. And so that's really what it is. We do live events here in Newport Beach, California. Yeah. And you're welcome to join us for those once a month. Who wouldn't want to come here? If you're local. But if not, then you can tune into the podcast here. We get great yeah. guests and hear their views on nonprofits and you can learn from each other. It's great. It's great. So amazing. It's great. Isn't that so cool? That's so cool. So, so awesome. Cool. Anyway, so- <laughs> before we start recording, I said, well, what do you want to talk about? And Tiffany said, I don't know, music. <laughs> but I, here's what I'm going to say about music. Tiff is much younger than I as my A assistant lot younger. Here. And Emphasis I remember that. one of the first times you came into my office and you saw the records on my wall mm-hmm. and you said, who's Billy Joel? <laughs> And I almost kicked you out. So <laughs> Okay. In all fairness, there's a lot of Billies. There's Billy Idol. There's Billy Ray Cyrus. Oh my gosh. I get, You're I get not confused. making this better at all. But I get really confused. Well, that's Billy a gen- Idol. just a general state of kind of life <laughs> for you, I think, sometimes. <laughs> but yeah, anyway, so if you want to know about good music. Maybe don't go to TIFF. I don't know. But then there's other things that you do know, like yeah. you're a big Fleetwood Mac fan. I love Fleetwood Mac. Which is just... Stevie Nicks, come on. Yeah. So, right. so who knows? But anyway. let's talk about right before this, I was singing a song and he had no clue what I was talking about. And it was from the 1990s. Yeah. I don't know. But then you played it and I was like, oh no, I know. I've heard that. Did, did you I know? I don't know it. You, you weren't singing it. Well, I don't know. Okay. <laughs> oh my gosh. Anyway, all right, let's get let's get to the podcast. Back We've got it. some really cool guests today. Not one, but two. We've got Ooh. two guests. It's Ben Lambert and Adam Cohen. They're college students and they've co-founded a nonprofit called Kids Being Kids. Just, you know, wow. in their downtime when they're I not studying. Doesn't that make you feel like what am I doing with my life? <laughs> I mean, it makes me wow. feel like what are you doing with your life? <laughs> They started this just back in 2022, and they're up in Canada. Their mission is to give every child the chance to play sports regardless of their economic circumstances. Wow. These are your kind of this people. This is right up my alley. Right? This is awesome. So they're partnering even now with big brands like New Balance and Mustangs Baseball and more, and they're just growing and doing amazing things. And I was really impressed when I talked to them because, I mean, they are college students, but it's just incredible what they've done in such a short amount of time. Wow. Throughout Canada, really, they're already expanding, and it's pretty cool. So, That's awesome. Really, really impressed with these guys. I think what they're going to share is going to blow you away, and they've learned a lot of lessons very quickly that they'll have to share. Mm. And so we want to share those with you. So Ben Lambert and Adam Cohen from Kids Being Kids will be with us right after this brief message from our sponsor. <laughs> okay. Bye. Nonprofit Connect with Matt Barnes is brought to you by Rogue Creatives. Did you know that your brand has a personality all of its own? Well, it does. Or it should. But maybe it doesn't. How do you know if it does? Here's what you do. Ask yourself, does the way you describe your organization match the way you describe your branding? Because it really needs to. Why? Because people don't connect with organizations, they just don't. They don't feel connected to them. They, they feel connected to characters. They feel connected to personality. So it's super important that your brand has a personality that connects with the right people to bring them into your story. And that's what Rogue Creatives is all about. We've developed our very own process called the Strategic Storytelling Framework to define your brand personality and create a brand foundation that will make sure your organization has that main character energy that connects with others and pulls them right into your story. And by the way, it works. And we got the receipts. 
Our nonprofit clients have seen incredible increases in giving that have allowed them to help even more people and make the world a better place. Get started today by visiting roguecreatives.com slash NPC. That's NPC for Nonprofit Connect. You can schedule a free brand consultation and take our free online brand character quiz. And we all know that everybody loves a good online quiz, especially when it's free. So get over there and do that because it's, it, why not? Why wouldn't you? You love it. It's going to be fun. That's roguecreatives.com slash NPC to begin defining your brand character today. There's no commitment or risk for you at all. And honestly, we just can't wait to meet you. We, we kind of think we could be good friends. I think we could hang out. You could buy us lunch. We can help you with your branding and talk about the shows we're binging or whatever. It'd be nice. Rogue Creatives. Seriously, creative storytelling. All right, on with the show. This has been a Rogue Creatives production. All right. Here we go. Welcome, Ben and Adam, to the podcast. Thank you. Thanks for having us, Matt. Yeah, thanks for being here. Before we get started, we always start with uh, some random questions just to, you know, break the ice a little bit, right? Yeah, yeah. I got, a, I got a list of like 60 questions, and then I have a randomizer that picks three of them. Ready? Here we go. You can be a sidekick to any superhero, and you also get their powers. Which one would you choose? Oh, well, I can... I can start us off with that one. In my opinion, it's a no-brainer, Superman. There you go. I think he's by far the most powerful superhero in both Marvel, DC, whatever you want to, whatever you want to talk about. I'll argue Superman. <laughs> Forget Kryptonite. He's on top. Batman. <laughs> to be honest, I think that's it's a scam. Batman cannot beat Superman. Yeah. <laughs> I'd have to go with I don't know, like probably probably Iron Man, Tony Stark. Growing up, that kid, that guy was. Uh something else i thought like he was the coolest guy ever superpowers yeah. so sick his house was awesome he had, his, he had that he had that new r8 i remember at the time it was like uh -huh. the coolest thing ever so pro i'm gonna probably go with iron man like i can't like, yeah like that's like an iconic superhero so all right that's good good answers good answers i judge your answers too so just so you know like <laughs> I'll, I'll tell you if it's a bad answer uh i'll let you know what uh if you could insert yourself in any movie ever what would it be yeah i mean I'm just gonna go with my favorite movie, which yeah. is Inception. I would, I would, I would love to be involved in Inception. All right. I think conceptually, the idea of of what's going on there and it's it's revolutionary, right? The whole dreaming aspect of it, dream within a dream, like you can yeah. do whatever you want. I would love to experience that once. I was never the one who can. Um, I can never control my dreams, you know, and I never, I never got to do that. Some of my friends like uh, were able to do that when we were young, but. I always wanted to experience that at least once, you know? Now you might be right now. That's very true. <laughs> I hope not. Inception's a good one. I'd probably have to go with, like, I mean, I got a lot of favorite movies. I have a list on my phone. I'm a big movie junkie, but, like, nice. oh, I'm probably, like, I mean, my favorite movie is Green Book, but I can't go with Green Book. I don't, I'm not, I don't know if I'd see myself in that, but probably maybe, like, oh, man, this is hard. Spider-Man. <laughs> Like, I'll probably go back to the superhero. I think superheroes <laughs> are so awesome. I'd probably go with Spider Man. Like, yeah, that'd be fun. That the life. And I think that'd be cool to like be a sidekick a little bit. There you uh, go. Any of the movies, any of the Spider Man movies would be pretty awesome to be a part All of. All right. All right. Yeah. All right. Spider last question. Uh, we got a theme today, I guess. When, yeah. not if, but when they make a movie about your lives, who's going to play you? I mean, like, based on what my hair looks like right now, I'd probably have to go with Leonardo DiCaprio. It's pretty slick back. <laughs> um, <laughs> I'd probably go with Leo. I think he's good. I think sure. he's, got, he's got some good movies out there. I like him in a lot of his movies. Probably Leo. Yeah. 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 It's a good one, Ben. I would want to go with, like, a Jake Gyllenhaal. There you go. Jake oh, that, that, okay, that could fit you, man. I can see that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah I can see that. I can see that. Stay on theme with the whole superheroes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a good one. I like that one. Nice. All right. Well, let's get into you guys and who you are. Now, you are the first college students, I think, that I've interviewed on this podcast. Uh, you don't get a lot of college students running nonprofit organizations. Tell no. us a little bit of, of your origin story. How did you, you know, what brought you to where you are and what are you doing? Yeah, I, I can get us started on that. And Ben, feel free to to jump in at any point. But little background, I guess, Ben and I's relationship. I met Ben during our first year in, in university. So we were all going through COVID-19 at the time. So it was a little hard to like meet new people and friends. Yeah. 
Ben lived no in my prom. no prom, by the way. No prom. I gotta remember that. <laughs> we lost no that on prom. prom. Yeah. No graduation trip, plenty no. of yeah. plenty of stuff that we did miss, but it was kind of hard to meet people. So when I did meet Ben in my building, uh, we were similar age, right? So we were both experiencing like the lack of social environment that we all had. So we were kind of also very like-minded individuals, both Ben and I have a entrepreneur entrepreneurial mindset so we met and we started talking about like what we're going to do the summer of first year and we we were thinking of just business ideas and we worked together on a hardscaping business where we were doing power washing deck staining sealing pretty much whatever someone asked us to do we'd figure out a way to get it done yeah we went we like to think add on that we would go into jobs and after first year and like Sometimes we'd have no idea what we were doing. I kind of just like, we got to YouTube this man. Like we got to figure this one out. Like, you know, they asked yeah. us to do this. I think I've seen my dad do it, but like, I don't know. <laughs> like, you know, Let's go home, talk to our dads, get back at it. Like, I don't know if I could do this. So we did. Yeah, I guess Adam, you can continue. But yeah, the hardscaping thing, a lot of stories um, for sure with that. But yeah, <laughs> fake it till you make it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. A little bit of that for sure. Um, no, but it was a great experience and it also um, helped us kind of gauge each other on a, on a business level. So we, we learned how to work together and then we kind of took that experience and during our second year, we were looking to do something else. And, you know, we heard all of our friends and during COVID kind of, um, we're both athletes. I mean, so we heard during COVID, there was a whole situation with, you know, the affordability of sports kind mm -hmm. of big subject that that came across in our lives and we were thinking we actually got into an argument which I play baseball Ben plays hockey we were arguing about which sport is more expensive to play because I mean I was I was breaking a baseball bat and I'm like crap like that's another 300 400 dollars down the drain right, right. There. And hockey sticks and shin pads and the whole whole set is also expensive so we had gone to a fight about it <laughs> and out of that fight came the realization that at the end of the day, we both have a ton of equipment sitting in our houses that's worth an incredible value that is getting no utilization anymore. Like this stuff just sits there collecting dust yeah. in our basements. And who's to say it can't go to use? So we wanted to think of a way to kind of gather all that equipment and find another life for it. And who's to say like this stuff is even in bad shape? A lot of a lot of times people will have stuff sitting down there that maybe they used for half a season or not even brand new stuff that no one touched. Yeah, like a lot of the, a lot of the stuff we get is like like basically brand new. It could be like we have to shop yeah. and no one ever know. And like yeah, to go to Adam's point, like this like it's good equipment and it's all and everyone has kids that have grown out of the equipment. If it's you know your first pair of skates, second pair of skates, or right. your third baseball bat, or you know your your you know a helmet that you wore when you're in whatever elementary school there was just everyone had equipment in their basement but no one wanted to get rid or no no one to get rid of it no one had a means to get rid of it it was just sitting there and they didn't take time of their day to bring it to like you know somewhere to drop it off they know where to drop it off at and then we became that resource so then you know pick up that equipment drop it off and find another home for it and then, yeah so is that that's the model for so, for uh yeah, I mean, kids being kids yeah well there's like i guess you could say there's a couple there's two ways we could be we separate it in two different ways. You have like a collection and then a distribution side of things. So the okay. collection part will either go to, you know, door knocking, uh, you know, asking people you have equipment, you know, you're willing to donate. And then from there, we'll spread it out to distribution sites. So like a YMCA, uh, we okay. have a boys and girls club in Canada, same type of concept. You know, there's a teen challenge. I'm not sure if that's in America, but it's definitely, in, it's, it's in Canada. So like there's, we have different partnerships that we work with that have kids and they know the kids, they know the families because we don't know the families personally. And then they help us distribute to those families in need. But yeah, that's is, it just, is it just the two of you or have, do you have uh, other people helping you? Yeah. So I guess now, so we started uh, August, 2021. We did it with, I think five or six other students. Okay. And then come the summertime this year, probably around May, June, we brought on a lot of other people. Uh, we opened up a bunch of other divisions. So we have a division in Montreal, a uh, division in wow. Guelph, and then a division in London, Ontario, as well as St. Catharines, so Niagara region. And I think each team kind of facilitates the same type of operation that we do, but in their area. So they have a team of whatever, four or five. And there's, I think we're now around 30 people in that range. And yeah, everyone kind of facilitates their own, I guess you could think like, yeah, team in the yeah. same type of same uh, process.
And are they, are they uh, volunteers or are they paid staff? Yeah. So everyone's a volunteer, you know, everyone's doing it for experience. Um, you know, learn the process, be a part of it. I think it's really interesting. A lot of people, after they drop something off, they give me a call right away, man, like when's the next drive? Like a student yeah. again, you know, what, you know, help me with another idea. Our team wants to do another one. Like they were so inspired by it. So it's all volunteers, all students. Yeah. All different schools kind of facilitating the same stuff that we do at Kids Being Kids. What's been, I mean, what's been for you, the biggest challenge for you um, in, in getting this up and running? I would say right off the bat is just to go back for a second. Like we had this idea of, it seems like in theory, perfect, right? Everyone has equipment in their basements and people are most often ready to get rid of this stuff. Like it's, it just sits there taking up room, right? So a lot of people are happy to, to get it off their hands. And at the beginning, we started collecting all this equipment and it was sitting there in my garage and my dad started to get, get on me about it. And we came across our first obstacles. Like we have the equipment now, but we don't exactly the channels to distribute this equipment to the kids that need it. Right. right. So we had to figure out ways to start, you know, outreaching from cold calling, emailing as much as you can think of to, to try and get people on board with our vision and find avenues to distribute the equipment to kids that actually need it. So I think that was probably the biggest and the first obstacle that we had to kind of get over also like like to add on like finding the right kid you know what i mean like that right you know, that shoe size seven like that's this color you know, it's hard to find the exact kid for that size for that same you know that exact baseball bat that exact size that exact gender whatever it is it's difficult like it's like you know it, it's hard we don't know the kids we don't know the families right we don't so how do you do that but what but boys and boys and girls club ymca so those groups are the i guess those organizations they know the families personally a lot better sure. than us and they're the ones that know, you know, John needs a size seven, Michael needs a size six. And they let us know that, that those kids need that. And then we go from there. Yeah. Um, so kind of like our, you know, our middleman in the situation to get the equipment to the kids. So you've so been partnering with these other organizations. Yeah, correct. Yeah. yeah. Has that yeah. been, has that been easy or challenging? Like what, what, what have been the, what, what's kind of come out of that for you? Actually, um, working with those, those institutions has helped us tremendously because they not only are large actors with, you know, organizational structures in place that can help us, but they also have programs that serve these underprivileged kids that we're trying to find. Right. So right. we work with certain programs like the boys and girls club, which do their after school programs for, you know, socioeconomic communities that, that maybe are in need of new equipment. Right. Right. So they helped us facilitate that. And then we would organize the outreach and, and, have them promote it for us and then sure. that way we can connect with the people that we need to so they've they've definitely helped us and they believe in our vision as well so i would say it hasn't been as challenging as as you may think yeah they've definitely helped us streamline the entire operation which has been very very nice yeah that's awesome that's awesome do you have anything you wanted to add to that ben no i think he kind of chipped like he, he kind of hit it all but i think the biggest thing was like the first one was the big was like the hardest one i think if we have to yeah. like you know remember what the hardest one was it was getting that first person to believe in us and what we want to do because we had a bunch of equipment it, it was all in adam's garage it was more just like you know we could do it just like give us you know give us a list of stuff you need and we'll go find it and that's what happened our first time was i mean our first partner was boys and girls club yeah we spoke to the you know, the person that ran that location and they told us, you know, we need X, Y, and Z. There was a bunch of stuff. I think there was like karate mats on there. There was like a, a bunch of stuff, you know, hot cooking bath, bath whatever it was. Pardon? Yeah. Like 20 pound dumbbells, like random, yeah. random, equipment. random stuff. And then we went on a hunt and that was like our, our the original model or the, the original <laughs> process to gain the equipment was not effective at all. We would kind of <laughs> like, we would just go running around. We had like with six people and everyone would just go door knocking. Like we need karate mats. We need karate mats. Like start calling karate places. And or dojos. And yeah, so th and that's how, I mean, that, the hardest one was definitely the first one, for sure. Yeah, yeah. So the, it's, you know, you like, yeah, I think with any nonprofit, well, anything, probably there's a pretty steep learning curve there. And yeah. and you learn and you adapt. You know, I think the reason I asked about the partnering is, I, I, you know, one of the things that we're always trying to encourage people is to find ways to collaborate, nonprofits to collaborate with each other and find ways that they can complement each other's services and help each other out. And there, there seems to be, sometimes a resistance to that sometimes they don't they don't want to do that did you find that at all or were people pretty open i would say i would say they're pretty open i mean our business model kind of works on that aspect of collaboration yeah like 
we pride ourselves on our strength being that collection, right? Yeah. And then they have the channels to distribute it. So we're kind of just combining our strengths to the end of the day, help those that need it, right? Yeah. So I didn't. I find that there wasn't, the only resistance that we found was, I, again, like as college kids, like we have to prove, I guess, our legitimacy to them, right? Our, like our effectiveness and our drive to actually get it done. So I think that was, once we got over that hump, we kind of... Um, we're able to use that to get to our next institution, right? And then use it as evidence to say, listen, we've done this successfully. We've done that successfully. Here's how we can help you do it as well. And are you are you a, a, an official nonprofit organization? So right now, we're it's a little bit of a bureaucratic process. We're, <laughs> yeah. we're trying to navigate that space. Okay. Um, where, I mean, we started just as a grassroots organization and sure. now- we're definitely picking up steam and we're we're putting in place the processes that we need to in order to register as a nonprofit. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, we're we've started the process for sure and and we're going through it now, but as of um today we're not technically not registered now. So you're not fundraising right now. No, no, no we're we're not working with finances. It's not monetary donations, we're strictly using equipment. Okay. Got it. Yeah. Very yeah. cool. There's definitely um challenges to being a nonprofit there's challenges to not being a nonprofit um what are you hoping that you know when you get your your nonprofit status what i guess what's next like what are you hoping to to take the next steps just being able to like run an event and raise money like yeah. the power of money is just insane right and we all know that so being able to raise funds and being able to put those used to like you know put that used to you know buying equipment and then you know giving it out to families or uh, you know i think we just yeah hosting events and raising money and something we noticed you know was with jumpstart canada so jumpstart canadian tire i'm not sure if you're aware of mm -hmm. who they are but it's what they do is the same type of kind of concept as us but they you know jumpstarts made by canadian tire and they give 20 percent discounts to you know customers who i guess meet this criteria and that's their way of kind of giving back it's like the okay. same type of thing we do but they give discounts to go use in store and i think our model would be to buy the equipment and give it away completely free like no mm. cost thing right so now the 20 percent, like it's covering tax you know what i mean yeah. like what does they do so i think giving away the equipment for free uh would be what we would do with the money yeah hosting events would be the biggest thing for sure got it very cool very yeah cool. i'd also just i guess it kind of goes hand in hand but scalability with finances obviously comes the ability to create a larger version of what we're doing right now right like we're limited everything's coming out of our pocket gas money yeah uh, like all of that so time and money is definitely like important and the ability to you know have bring people on that are, are i guess more experienced and bring that professional like would really help for sure and and that's what we're looking forward to yeah. In the future. I mean, I, yeah, the infrastructure there and I would imagine space becomes a concern as you start to accumulate equipment and need mm -hmm. a place to keep it for, you know, what, before you, before you distribute it and uh, exactly. you're going to get, you get more and more and bigger and bigger. But um, let's go back to the student aspect of it. I'm, I'm, I'm interested in this, always fascinated by what people, you know, I, I went to school and um, was focused on, you know, school and <laughs> doing school and having friends yeah. and and whatnot and you guys have you're on your second business now what is it like what were the challenges in that for you and and you know why why not just be you know students what what was it about this that was like no we got to do this i think it's and i can i mean adam you can always add on to this but i think it was creating a business with no cost we had you know ace hardscaping we did all those other those other businesses we had caught it was like you know, the costs were insane for some of the stuff that we did. So I think we were able to run a business with a very little cost. Obviously, it's not a business, but that business concept. Yeah. And yeah, like pretend like, you know, we're in grow, grow, a bit, grow, like, you know, an organization, create a sure. team, leadership, have like, you know, give out tasks, have team meetings. I think we like the concept of growing something together. I think, you know, me and Adam work really well together. So I think it was a little bit of that that was involved. I don't know, Adam, if you want to add on, but yeah. I'd say the biggest difficulty of like balancing school and, and the like the nonprofit is time like definitely time is is tough it demands like a lot out of you and sure. you have to learn to balance it but i would say there's no real way to tell you like to just be a student i guess it's just who ben and i are like we enjoy it right so yeah. if, if you didn't enjoy it you'd be done like on the first month right yeah um 
we genuinely enjoy every aspect of the from the outreach to the donations it's satisfying for us and it and it itches that part of our brain so it's i think it's a genuine passion of ours which which keeps us motivated yeah being a student uh been challenging from the perception perspective as far as you know dealing with people like they do they is it a problem you know taking you seriously or that type of thing or has that been actually not a problem i would say there's 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 a pro and con to it i mean mm -hmm. like i mentioned before some people when they hear that you're a student, they kind of, I don't want to say think less of you, but they take you a little bit less seriously as opposed to when you graduate. But it also helps you get your foot in the door. Like, hey, we're two college kids. We have this initiative going. And then it, it helps you start that conversation. Like people love to see two college kids with initiative. And, and if it's a good for a good cause too, it helps even more, right? So sure. I would say there's there's a little bit of drawback, but it also helps in certain ways. Yeah, it's a way it's actually a way into the story for people in, in a lot of yeah, ways, you know, exactly. we, we're uh, my company works with a lot of nonprofits in, you know, telling the stories, telling the stories and bringing people into their story. And you got to look for whatever that you can connect with people on to bring to bring them in. And I think that's an aspect that is unique for you that is going to be interesting. And also the fact that right now, at least you're not asking for money. I think there, there's, <laughs> there's that part of it that there's also maybe a, a relief you knock on the door and it's like oh you just want old equipment yeah oh yeah we can do that you know i mean i would imagine that that would play into it a little bit you want to clear space in my basement that'd be that'd be awesome like come yeah. clear the space in my basement like i don't want to i don't want this stuff it's exactly what happens every time so right 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 so agree. you're you're actually doing them a favor at the same time in some ways it's yeah, like yeah. oh yeah a little junk i got in there that i haven't really thought about and you're right like even that old stuff, though, I mean, maybe it got used for a season and then that's it. Exactly. Because people grew out of it so quickly. You know what I mean? When yeah. You it, like you literally wear it for a season. I remember like I got like so I had so many skates in my basement. Yeah. I just wear it for a season. That was it. It's just yeah. constantly rotating. So. That's crazy. That's There's crazy. also as students, it's it brings a unique opportunity for us to kind of put into real life, like what we're learning in school. Yeah. Right. We actually get to apply the knowledge we're learning and it even for our team like we we've assembled a team of students across like various undergrad undergraduate degrees with that all bring unique skill sets right yeah. so they all get to apply with their learning which will help them you know in their careers as well as help us like it, it's it's kind of a mutually beneficial idea for for really everyone that's involved yeah uh, which i think has helped us bring a lot of success like we have marketing students we have um engineering students who have helped us like for example like uh software engineering helps us do our website right yeah uh, stuff like that business when well, i'm in business um this is basically running a business right yeah. it's a business without money so it's <laughs> it's still important to learn how to facilitate and structure a business environment i think it helps us all well and in some ways i it's fascinating to me to think about it this way because I think a lot of there's, you know, different people start businesses from different places or different viewpoints. And a lot of people start it from, I've got a business plan and I know the finances, but they don't know the teamwork aspect or they don't know the, you know, all of those kind of things. And you guys are able to do this and sort of run an organization without having to necessarily run the, the, the business -y part, the finances and all that stuff. And really yeah. focusing on the organization and creating an organization and what does that look like? And then, you know, what a great experience for everyone involved that can be applied to any business, any nonprofit, any, anything that they, that these, you guys or any students that work with you go to do in the future. Exactly. Yeah, for sure. Very, very cool. Mm -hmm. Interesting. What advice would you give to other college students who are like, have, have an idea for something they want to do? I mean, this is the, in some ways you've, you've created the ultimate college group project, right? Yeah, well, for no grade. But yeah, what advice, like if people were thinking of, you know, doing something like this, what what are the, the things that you would advise? I think just just do it, like just yeah. get up and do it. You know, if you have that idea, it's just like, well, you know, what's the what's the con of it? You know, OK, yeah, it doesn't work out, whatever. But I think, yeah, just try it out. Give a couple calls. Start cold calling. I think when me and Adam came up with the idea of, you know, doing kids being kids and running an organization like this. I think we just like woke up the next day and like, hey, let's do it. Let's start making calls. Like, who are we calling? <laughs> who, who do we got to call? You know, who's the first person we're going to have on the team? Who do we need help? You know, who do, knows who? Uh, yeah, we just woke up and did it. Like, let's go. Yeah. I would say just to add to that, 
follow through. Like, I think if you have the idea, an idea is an idea. It's nothing unless you follow through. And once you have people that believe in you and believe in your vision, you need to follow through. You know what I mean? Like, mm-hmm. If you don't have that drive for someone to believe in what you want to do, like, it'll just, it'll hit a dead end and then everyone will, will kind of dissipate. Right. So I think if you're going to start an idea, be prepared to follow through. Yeah. I tell, I tell people all the time, you know, because people come to me and like, Oh, what do you think of this idea? Or, you know, that I, I'm thinking of doing or whatever. But a lot of times people will say, I'm sure somebody's thought of this or I'm sure, you know, I'm like, yeah, I'm sure somebody has, that doesn't mean they followed through on it. It doesn't mean they actually did it. And, yeah. And even if they did, it doesn't mean that they're going to do it the way that you would do it and and what you bring to it. And but yeah, I mean, there's there's no really new ideas under the sun, but it's, you know, so many people have tons of great ideas and nobody ever actually follows through and exactly. actually makes it happen. So, I mean, I, I just I'm I'm very uh, impressed that you guys have done this. What is the future for for kids being kids? What do you what do you want it to be? Yeah, I think just going back to like what we were talking before, like in my mind, like I I want to I want to scale it. Like I think it's it's a scalable idea, and we're already trying our best to do that right now by, you know, copy and pasting what we've successfully done in London, Ontario, to other cities in Canada. Yeah. It's just increasing the amount of collection, increasing the amount of distribution. You know, the amount the more kids that we can get involved in sports, I think the better. And there's so many benefits we can go on and on about the positive impacts of sports for kids yeah. from their physical health to their mental health to their sociability. I think we just want to go take it to the moon. Reality just go as far as we can help as many kids as we can. Really. That's, that's my idea for it. Completely agree. I don't know. You just, yeah, scale it. I don't know. I got nothing else to add. Hit it on the, <laughs> hit it on the head. That's all. That's our, that's our vision. So yeah. Do you, do you at all deal with some of the stuff you were just talking about as far as like addressing, you know, uh, the, the positives of sports or, or any of that, or is it really just about supplying the equipment and the, to the people who need it? Uh, I mean, are you, you know, do you guys do any talks about mental health or any of the types of things that go along with that? Or is it more partnering with people that do stuff like that? I don't know if we've done anything directly like that, but we've, you know, we've had a couple, I guess you could say classes on starting a business at the YMCA with their programs. Mm -hmm. YMCA is like other, like a newcomer program. Uh, We've done a couple classes like that. And we teach a bunch of kids, how we started kids being kids, exact same thing we're doing right now. Yeah. Um, And we just talked to the kids about it. You know, we gave the kids we talked to them about the idea, how we did it. And then we, we got them to pitch us an idea. Mm, and nice. We split them up into groups of three or four. I mean, some of the kids came with unreal ideas. And yeah, that was kind of the only thing. It was more like starting a business, but not directly around like the mental health, health you know, healthy, active living. Hopefully in the near future, something comes up. But yeah, yeah, no. yeah I yeah. think it's very exciting. And and I, I just think, you know, like the, the aside from the practical of what you're providing these kids, the the example you're setting of like if, you know, do something, you know, <laughs> if, you, if you got an idea, let's let, go for it. It's, I was listening to, I don't know if you know, like Ar- Arnold Schwarzenegger just put out a book and he's been doing the podcast circuit. So I heard him on a couple of different yeah, yeah. podcasts and he, he's, <laughs> his book is be useful. And he's talking about that, but, but he was saying like, he, same kind of thing, like, just like, okay, what, what, what can I do? You know? And, and why, why wait? Like, if you can do it, go do it. And, um, and it's funny that you even brought up the hardscaping thing because he talked about like that that was one of the things that he and a buddy did one summer while they were trying to figure out how to survive as they're trying to figure out what's next. And they just started a landscaping thing and they had no idea what they were doing. And they <laughs> but they advertised <laughs> it like they did. And yeah, they, oh yeah, they we had did. definitely uh, exaggerated. For, we thought we were professional. They thought we were professionals. But that yeah. of our playbook right there. Yeah, yeah. I was like, OK, yeah. you guys. You guys are on the I same remember track. like the ad, I remember we had I remember I remember we had a, a customer that asked us like again we were just doing decks like we were just standing yeah. decks standing decks and we had a customer ask us one day I'll never forget this he had probably a 70 foot tree and he loved it so much and it was in like his whole backyard was patio it was all wood and then he had a couple trees and they're huge trees like they must have been destroying the bottom of the deck and he's <laughs> like I want this I love this tree but I want to move it to the front yard is that possible <laughs> I was like, oh, we could figure something out for sure. Like, uh, I mean, I'll I'll talk, I'll go back, I'll talk, we'll try to plant something out. And I texted him like that. And I was like, yeah, there's no way, you know, we'll be able to do this. But I remember we had some crazy requests. Oh, yeah. Times for sure. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. I just That's wanted to, to quickly add, though, Matt, yeah. to your 
before about about starting an idea or following through with that idea it's like the idea of recycling sports equipment like this isn't a revolutionary idea like by no means or i feel like we're we're not reinventing the wheel right yeah there are and this is the first thing that we did like we went online and we searched like are people doing this right and i think we're combining the business models of two large companies one being jumpstart canada which we've just explained like they do monetary discounts which absolutely help families and then we wanted to combine that with the idea of i'm not sure if you're familiar with played against sports yeah where you resell secondhand sport equipment right yeah so this stuff still has value and it just doesn't have the means of getting from one place to the other and we're just trying to fill that gap but it's not a revolutionary idea we're just following through with it and if there's someone else that's doing out there like we're just want to do it better than them and we want to do it simpler right and that's our goal and i think no matter the idea you can you can definitely find a way to execute it yeah for sure i love it that's so great i mean if if i had to choose one thing like going back to the whole like just do it and get up and going like the whole carpe diem when it's just like speak louder than words and just go do it you know what I mean? I think that's what we did. And that's what made, you know, got to us where we are now, which is very small. We're still a startup, but we've seen a little bit of growth. I think like every day, just, you know, you know, go do it. Action speak louder than words. I think that's what I always kind of lean back to. Um, I love it. I guess mine would be try and connect with your community. I mean, like prior to doing this, I didn't even know I had a local boys and girls club in my mm. area. You know what I mean? Like seeing like a common place for people and, and especially kids to come together and and kind of bond over whatever maybe physical activity or, or in classrooms whatever whatever it is like I think seeing that seeing strangers come together is is a phenomenal thing and it kind of changed my whole perspective as soon as we started doing it when you know you have people come from different schools and different areas together to one place it kind of reminds you that you know, there is a communal aspect to like where I live. And I think that's, that's a great, that's a great thing to see and a great reminder if you haven't seen it in a while. Yeah, that's awesome. All right. We got a few closing questions for you here. And one is tied into what you just said. How, how do you guys connect with your community? Uh, yeah, I mean, I would say it definitely relates to what we were just talking about. I think coming to these places like the YMCA and, and Boys and Girls Club, like that is, these are communal institutions mm-hmm. um, that don't discriminate, like in regardless to any sort of race, gender, age, doesn't yeah. matter. They're open to everyone and that's a real community. You know what I mean? Like these yeah. people genuinely get together purely out of their own love and passion. And we just join it. You know what I mean? Like that's how we connect to our community. We try and help them and add value in, in regards to like what we can offer. We don't ask for anything in exchange. And, and I think that's what they all do. Everyone comes yeah. there to to give what they can. That's awesome. That's what- Is there somebody that you, in the world of, of nonprofits that you look up to or inspires you? I think personally, like we were talking about this not too long ago, like to get, but I don't want to like talk about it too much, but like the whole, the whole idea of jumpstart, like they kind of, took a similar business idea and this is this is a national project like they've kind of like this is our goal right yeah i mean this president of jumpstart scott fraser i think that would be like kind of someone who i look up to in in regards to what they were able to accomplish i think it's great and it's definitely something that that we look to um and inspires us to continue what they're able to accomplish yeah that's a good one I think yeah, jumpstart. We, if we were if we're gonna have a lunch with somebody, we gotta have a lunch with our competitor. So I'd probably go with <laughs> I'd probably go with him. <laughs> I love the idea of uh, a competition in charity. You know, like yeah. <laughs> it sounds so counter counterintuitive or just wrong in some ways, but at the same time, it's like no, we're competing for who could do more good. So how does anybody lose in that competition? You know what I mean? Like we're all just pushing each other to do more good stuff. <laughs> no, it's, it's a healthy competition. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. We need it. We like it. We get it. That's well, the, I mean, to be fair, I would say we're not much of a competition on their part yet, but yes. <laughs> yes. Words, we, will yeah. be, we will be on their radar soon enough and right. uh, <laughs> we'll help each other hopefully and not just compete. <laughs> that's right. And that's when the movie gets made with Leo and who was it? Oh, Jake, Jake Gyllenhaal. Hall. Yeah, Jake yeah, Gyllenhaal. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. Last question. What aspect of your job brings you the most joy? 
I'm gonna have to go with probably seeing the kids when we've dropped off equipment in the past, um, and you get to you know drop off sports equipment or running shoes, whatever it is. Um, and then the following week, we go back to drop off something completely different. Uh, and you see those kids at that after school program wearing those shoes and using the equipment. I yeah. think that was like the the hit, you know, the hit home was just seeing that firsthand. I was like, wow, like it goes a long way. The stuff that was going to go in the garbage um, that was brand new, yeah. um, you know, we was put to use and you see the kids running around in the court. I think it's just, it's an unreal feeling. Um, yeah. I guess similarly for me, I would say the thank you notes, like we, we get these thank you notes and it's like, in, in addition to, I just like making use out of the stuff, like going out of your way to, to thank us. Like we get handwritten notes, emails, whatever it is, like it kind of feeds into that motivation to say like it's nice to see you know our hard work pay off and and the thankfulness that that we get back it, it keeps us going and it's definitely a nice reminder of like why we're doing this yeah for sure okay i'm gonna ask you one more question that just popped into my head yeah. you're, you're leading an organization of entirely volunteers right how do you keep them motivated and and excited and bring that joy to them you know for what they're doing yeah, keep them engaged, get them involved in everything that we do. If it's, you know, re redesign the website, like, hey, guys, come hop on this meeting, we have a cool meeting, come, you know, help us with this. That and then making them feel valued, you know, showing that like the work they're doing is like, you know, helping so many people and getting them to go to like, attend those drop offs, see those kids, you know, getting the same experiences and the same feelings that we get, sharing that with everyone else is contagious. And I think that's what, you know, keeps them motivated a little bit is just seeing it all happen. And then being part of a startup too, like, you know, yeah. So a year ago, right? Uh, who knows what happens in five years? So I think a little bit of that too, as well. Awesome. Where do people find uh, more information about you guys and what you're doing? Yeah. So it's all, I think it should be just kidsbeingkids.ca. Uh, and then our Instagram is kidsbeingkids.org. Uh, cool. So those are two main social media platforms. Awesome. Yeah. Well, Adam and Ben, thank you guys so much for, for joining me today. Um, this has been really cool. And I'm I'm just, you know, when I see people like you guys doing what you're doing, uh, I'm, I'm, I have hope for the future, which sometimes is, uh, is a hard thing to come by around here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <correct. laughs> so thank you thanks. for having us, Matt. Yes, of thank course. you. That was awesome. Well, well, there you have it. This episode of Nonprofit Connect with Matt Barnes, brought to you by Rogue Creatives, is over. It's done. Finished. What are you going to do with the rest of your day? You're going to take the dog for a walk, maybe have some dinner. But before you do any of those things, could you do us a massive favor and subscribe to the podcast on Apple Music or Spotify or wherever else you listen to us? Obviously, you don't have to, but, you know, it'd be very, very appreciated. Oh, and if you want to hear more from us, visit our website at npconnect.roguecreatives.com. That's npconnect, like nonprofit connect, dot roguecreatives.com. We'll see you soon. Nonprofit Connect with Matt Barnes is hosted and executive produced by me, Matt Barnes, with an assist by my chaos coordinator, Tiffany Pope. Production is by our amazing friends over at Fame, the B2B podcast agency, along with Belinda Carter Thompson and the team here at Rogue Creatives. Production lead is Luke Audi at Fame. Writing is by Sam Hollis at Fame and Matt Barnes and Taylor Bolanos from Rogue Creatives. Nemanja Koljaja of Fame is our audio editor and Arslan Yakub from Fame is our video editor. Creative direction is by Corey Hill of Rogue. Our artwork is designed by Hope O'Kelly and Joshua Marino at Rogue and Ian Salas of Fame. Theme music is composed and performed by Jared Atherton of Chapters. Luke Audi of Fame does our booking and our guest relations. Huge thanks to our amazing guests for joining us for this episode and to all of you incredible listeners for tuning in. If you enjoyed the show, and I don't know why you wouldn't have, don't forget to help us spread some good by giving us a good review. Preferably, you know, five stars with lots of words saying how amazing we are on whatever platform you're listening on. Apple Podcasts, Spotify, whatever it is. Also, tell your friends and subscribe so we can come straight into your potholes each and every time we have a new episode. For more information about Nonprofit Connect or to join us at a live event here in Orange County, California, visit our website, npconnect.roguecreatives.com. We'll catch you next time. This has been a Rogue Creatives production.